Tantalum is a chemical element with symbol Tar and atomic number 73. Previously known as Tantalium, its name comes from Tantalus, an anti-hero from Greek mythology. Tantalum is a rare, hard, blue-gray, lustrous transition metal that is highly corrosion-resistant. It is part of the refractory metals group, which are widely used as minor components in alloys. The chemical inertness of tantalum makes it a valuable substance for laboratory equipment and a substitute for platinum. Tantalum is also used for medical implants and bone repair. Its main use today is in tantalum capacitors in electronic equipment such as mobile phones, DVD players, video game systems and computers. Tantalum, always together with the chemically similar niobium, occurs in the minerals tantalite, columbite and coltan. Tantalum is a rare metal, comprising 699180000000000008 times 10 minus 9% of the universe, making it 1 15th as abundant in the universe as gold. Tantalum also comprises 699615000000000001.5 times 10 minus 4% of the Earth's crust, making it more abundant than other metals in the sixth period, such as rhenium, osmium, and iridium, but not as abundant as barium. History Tantalum was discovered in Sweden in 1802 by Anders Ekerberg. One year earlier, Charles Hatchett had discovered the element columbium. In 1809, the English chemist William Hyde Wollaston compared the oxides derived from both columbium, columbite, with a density 5.918 g per cc, and tantalum, tantalite, with a density 7.935 g per cc, and concluded that the two oxides, despite their difference in measure density, were identical. He decided to keep the name tantalum. After Friedrich Wohler confirmed these results, it was thought that columbium and tantalum were the same element. This conclusion was disputed in 1846 by the German chemist Heinrich Rose, who argued that there were two additional elements in the tantalite sample, and he named them after the children of tantalus, niobium, and pelopium. The supposed element, pelopium, was later identified as a mixture of tantalum and niobium, and it was found that the niobium was identical to the columbium already discovered in 1801 by Hatchett. The differences between tantalum and niobium were demonstrated unequivocally in 1864 by Christian Wilhelm Blumstrand and Henry Etienne St. Clair de Ville, as well as by Louis J. Troost, who determined the empirical formulas of some of their compounds in 1865. Further confirmation came from the Swiss chemist Jean-Charles Galassard de Marignac in 1866, who proved that there were only two elements. These discoveries did not stop scientists from publishing articles about the so-called Il Ninium until 1871. De Marignac was the first to produce the metallic form of tantalum in 1864, when he reduced tantalum chloride by heating it in an atmosphere of hydrogen. Early investigators had only been able to produce impure tantalum, and the first relatively pure ductile metal was produced by Werner von Bolton in 1903. Wires made with metallic tantalum were used for light bulb filaments until tungsten replaced it in widespread use. The name tantalum was derived from the name of the mythological Tantalus, the father of Niobe in Greek mythology. In the story, he had been punished after death by being condemned to stand knee-deep in water with perfect fruit growing above his head, both of which eternally tantalized him. Ekerberg wrote, This metal I call tantalum, partly in allusion to its incapacity, when immersed in acid, to absorb any and be saturated, for decades. The commercial technology for separating tantalum from niobium involved the fractional crystallization of potassium heptafluorotantalate away from potassium oxypentafluoroniabate monohydrate, a process that was discovered by Jean-Charles Galassard de Marignac in 1866. 
This method has been supplanted by solvent extraction from fluoride containing solutions of tantalum. Characteristics Physical properties Tantalum is dark, dense, ductile, very hard, easily fabricated, and highly conductive of heat and electricity. The metal is renowned for its resistance to corrosion by acids. In fact, at temperatures below 150 degrees Celsius tantalum is almost completely immune to attack by the normally aggressive aqua regia. It can be dissolved with hydrofluoric acid or acidic solutions containing the fluoride ion and sulfur trioxide, as well as with a solution of potassium hydroxide. Tantalum's high melting point of 3,017 degrees Celsius is exceeded among the elements only by tungsten, rhenium and osmium for metals, and carbon. Tantalum exists in two crystalline phases, alpha and beta. The alpha phase is relatively ductile and soft, it has body-centered cubic structure, noop hardness 200-400 HN and electrical resistivity 15 to 60 microohms cm. The beta phase is hard and brittle, its crystal symmetry is tetragonal. Noop hardness is 1000-1300 HN and electrical resistivity is relatively high at 170 to 210 microohms cm. The beta phase is metastable and converts to the alpha phase upon heating to 750 to 775 degrees Celsius. Bulk tantalum is almost entirely alpha phase, and the beta phase usually exists as thin films obtained by magnetron sputtering. Chemical vapor deposition or electrochemical deposition from a eutectic, molten salt solution. Chemical properties tantalum forms oxides with the oxidation states plus 5 and plus 4. The most stable oxidation state is plus 5, as seen in tantalum pentoxide. Tantalum pentoxide is the starting material for several tantalum compounds. The compounds are created by dissolving the pentoxide in basic hydroxide solutions or by melting it in another metal oxide. Such examples are lithium tantalate and lanthanum tantalate. In the lithium tantalate, the tantalate ion Tam-3 does not occur. Instead, this part of the formula represents linkage of Tau-7-6 octahedra to form a three-dimensional perovskite framework, while the lanthanum tantalate contains lone Tau-3-4 tetrahedral groups. The fluorides of tantalum can be used for its separation from niobium. Tantalum forms halogen compounds in the oxidation states of plus 5, plus 4, and plus 3 of the type tax 5, tax 4, and tax 3. Although multi-core complexes and substoichiometric compounds are also known, tantalum pentafluoride is a white solid with a melting point of 97.0 degrees Celsius and tantalum pentachloride is a white solid with a melting point of 247.4 degrees Celsius. Tantalum pentachloride is hydrolyzed by water and reacts with additional tantalum at elevated temperatures by forming the black and highly hygroscopic tantalum tetrachloride, while the trihalides can be obtained by reduction of the pentahalides with hydrogen, the diphalides do not exist. A tantalum tellurium alloy forms quasicrystals. Tantalum compounds with oxidation states as low as minus 1 have been reported in 2008. As in the cases of most other refractory metals, the hardest known compounds of tantalum are its stable nitrides and carbides. Tantalum carbide tac, like the more commonly used tungsten carbide, is a very hard ceramic that is used in cutting tools. Tantalum nitride is used as a thin film insulator in some microelectronic fabrication processes. Chemists at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in the United States have developed a tantalum carbide graphite composite material that is one of the hardest materials ever synthesized. Korean researchers have developed an amorphous tantalum tungsten copper alloy that is more flexible and two to three times stronger than commonly. Used steel alloys. 
There are two tantalum aluminides, TAL-3 and TAR-3-AL. These are stable, refractory, and reflective, and they have been proposed as coatings for use in infrared wave mirrors. Isotopes Natural tantalum consists of two isotopes, 180 MTA and 181 TAR. 181 TAR is a stable isotope. 180 MTA is predicted to decay in three ways. Isomeric transition to the ground state of 180 tar, beta decay to 180 W, or electron capture to 180 HF. However, radioactivity of this nuclear isomer has never been observed, and only a lower limit on its half-life of 2.0 times 1016 years has been set. The ground state of 180 tar has a half-life of only 8 hours. 180 MTA is the only naturally occurring nuclear isomer. It is also the rarest isotope in the universe. Taking into account the elemental abundance of tantalum and isotopic abundance of 180 MTA in the natural mixture of isotopes, tantalum has been examined theoretically as a salting material for nuclear weapons. An external shell of 181 tar would be irradiated by the intensive high-energy neutron flux from a hypothetical exploding nuclear weapon. This would transmute the tantalum into the radioactive isotope 182 tar, which has a half-life of 114.4 days and produces gamma rays with approximately 1.12 million electron volts of energy apiece which would significantly increase the radioactivity of the nuclear fallout from the explosion for several months. Such salted weapons have never been built or tested, as far as is publicly known, and certainly never used as weapons. Tantalum can be used as a target material for accelerated proton beams for the production of various short-lived isotopes including ATLE, ATRB, and 160YB. Occurrence tantalum is estimated to make up about 1 ppm or 2 ppm of the Earth's crust by weight. There are many species of tantalum minerals, only some of which are so far being used by industry as raw materials. Tantalite, microlite, wogenite, exonite, polycrase. Tantalite TAR-206 is the most important mineral for tantalum extraction. Tantalite has the same mineral structure as columbite-206. When there is more tantalum than niobium it is called tantalite and when there is more niobium than tantalum is it called columbite. The high density of tantalite and other tantalum-containing minerals makes the use of gravitational separation the best method. Other minerals include samarskite and fergusonite. The primary mining of tantalum is in Australia, where the largest producer, Global Advanced Metals, formerly known as Talison Minerals, operates two mines in Western Australia, Greenbushes in the southwest and Wajana in the Pilbara region. The Wajana mine was reopened in January 2011 after mining at the site was suspended in late 2008 due to the global financial crisis. Less than a year after it reopened, Global Advanced Metals announced that due to again Softening tantalum demand, and other factors, tantalum mining operations were to cease at the end of February 2012. Wajana produces a primary tantalum concentrate which is further upgraded at the Greenbush's operation before being sold to customers. Whereas the large-scale producers of niobium are in Brazil and Canada, the other are also yield a small percentage of tantalum. Some other countries such as China, Ethiopia, and Mozambique mine ores with a higher percentage of tantalum, and they produce a significant percentage of the world's output of it. Tantalum is also produced in Thailand and Malaysia as a byproduct of the tin mining there. During gravitational separation of the ores from placer deposits, not only is cassiterite found, but a small percentage of tantalite also included. The slag from the tin smelters then contains economically useful amounts of tantalum, which is leached from the slag. Future sources of supply of tantalum, in order of estimated size, are being explored in Saudi 
Arabia, Egypt, Greenland, China, Mozambique, Canada, Australia, the United States, Finland, and Brazil. It is estimated that there are less than 50 years left of tantalum resources, based on extraction at current rates demonstrating the need for increased recycling. Status as a conflict resource. Tantalum is considered a conflict resource. Coltan, the industrial name for a columbite tantalite mineral from which columbium and tantalum are extracted, can also be found in Central Africa, which is why tantalum is being linked to warfare in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. According to an October 23, 2003 United Nations report, the smuggling and exportation of coltan has helped fuel the war in the Congo, a crisis that has resulted in approximately 5.5 4 million deaths since 1998 making it the world's deadliest documented conflict since World War II. Ethical questions have been raised about responsible corporate behavior, human rights, and endangering wildlife, due to the exploitation of resources such as coltan in the armed conflict regions of the Congo Basin. However, although important for the local economy in Congo, the contribution of coltan mining in Congo to the world's supply of tantalum is usually small. The United States Geological Survey reports in its yearbook that this region produced a little less than 1% of the world's tantalum output in 2002 to 2006, peaking at 10% in 2000 and 2008. The stated aim of the Solutions for Hope Tantalim project is to source conflict-free tantalim from the Democratic Republic of Congo production and fabrication. Several steps are involved in the extraction of tantalim from tantalite. First, the mineral is crushed and concentrated by gravity separation. This is generally carried out near the mine site. Chemical refining tantalim ores often contain significant amounts of niobium, which is itself a valuable metal. As such, both metals are extracted so that they may be sold. The overall process is one of hydrometallurgy. A large number of chemical treatment procedures for the breakdown of primary sources have been developed. Some of these have been adopted for commercial production while others have been tested on a fairly large scale. There are yet a few others that have been tested only on a laboratory scale. All these processes can essentially be divided into reduction to metallic or compound form, chlorination, alkaline fusion and acid dissolution. Extraction begins with a leaching a step in which the ore is treated with hydrofluoric acid and sulfuric acid to produce water-soluble hydrogen fluorides. This allows the metals to be separated from the various non-metallic impurities in the rock. TAR-205 plus 14HF2H2, TAR-7 plus 5H2ONB205 plus 10HF2H2, NBOF5 plus 3H2O. The tantalum and niobium hydrogen fluorides are then removed from the aqueous solution by liquid-liquid extraction using organic solvents, such as cyclohexanone or methyl isobutyl ketone. This step allows the simple removal of various metal impurities which remain in the aqueous phase in the form of fluorides. Separation of the tantalum and niobium is then achieved by pH adjustment. Niobium requires a higher level of acidity to remain soluble in the organic phase and can hence be selectively removed by extraction into less acidic water. The pure tantalum hydrogen fluoride solution is then neutralized with aqueous ammonia to give tantalum hydroxide 5, which is calcinated to tantalum pentoxide. H2, TAR 7, plus 5 H2O plus 7 NH3, TAR 5 plus 7 NH4, F2, TAR 5, TAR 205 plus 5 H2O. The hydrogen fluoride can also be treated with potassium fluoride to produce potassium. Heptafluorotantalate H2, TAF 7, plus 2 kilofarads K2, TAF 7, plus 2 HF. This is used to produce metallic tantalum by reduction with sodium, at approximately 800 degrees Celsius in molten salt. 
K2 TAF 7 plus 5 NATA plus 5 NAF plus 2 kilo farads in an older method, called the Mariniak process. The tantalum and niobium were separated by treating the initial aqueous mixture of hydrogen fluorides with potassium fluoride. H2 TAF 7 plus 2 kilo farads K2 TAF 7 plus 2 HF H2 NBO F5 plus 2 kilo farads K2 NBO F5 plus 2 HF The resulting niobium in tantalum potassium fluorides could then be separated by fractional crystallization due to their different water solubilities. Electrolysis Electrolysis using a modified version of the hall erault process. Instead of requiring the input oxide and output metal to be in liquid form, tantalum electrolysis operates on non-liquid powdered oxides. The initial discovery came in 1997 when Cambridge University researchers immersed small samples of certain oxides in baths of molten salt and reduced the oxide with electric current. The cathode uses powdered metal oxide. The anode is made of carbon. The molten salt at 1000 degrees Celsius is the electrolyte. The first refinery has enough capacity to supply 3 to 4 percent of annual global demand. Fabrication and metalworking All welding of tantalum must be done in an inert atmosphere of argon or helium in order to shield it from contamination with atmospheric gases. Tantalum is not solderable. Grinding tantalum is difficult, especially so for annealed tantalum. In the annealed condition, tantalum is extremely ductile and can be readily formed as metal sheets.